Hello and welcome back to another Pixel Game Maker tutorial. Today is another Patreon request from Midnight Darkness. We wanted to have some side view enemy examples. And so with that said, let's get started. All right, so here we are in the side view enemy sample pack that I have for my Patreons. You can always go to my itch. And this one is under samples pack two, side view enemy samples. And so I'm just going to keep adding to this as I get more ideas for enemies. But yeah, so this will be available, link below. So let's get into how the sample pack is structured. Basically, I have a basic jumper sample. Then I have a jumper sample that is more a chase sample. Then I have a basic crawling, which is just going around square areas. And then I have an advanced sample, which is just going up and down, left and right on any kind of an area. So this would be like more like your world map. All right, so when you're using this pack, what you're going to do is say you just want a basic jumper. Now the basic jumper doesn't chase the player, it just jumps over ledges. Matter of fact, we can just look at this real quick. It's just going to be jumping over ledges like this. And it's going to come to a point where it does jump up if you want it to. And basically you are specifying all this stuff. So what you can do here is you can just simply click on this object right here. See that's just called an enemy jumper and you can right click, go to edit base object. This is going to show you the logic of this base of this jumper. Basically, it has a move state, which it's just moving towards the display direction. So it has a left and right display direction, right? So it's just moving. And then it has a couple different states that it can do. First one is, is it can turn. The, another one is, is it can try to jump. And then another one is, is that it can jump from the ledge. So jumping from the ledge, what we do is we utilize... The second condition here, if we expand it open, we see that it says contact with tile walls detection when moving one tile. So what this is checking is it's checking one tile ahead of the object. And so what we're doing is we're checking to see if the ground, the bottom of the wall detection of the object, if it is not touching a tile. So what it's doing is as it's moving forward, it's checking one tile ahead. So right here, it would be checking, you know, about right here. Then when it gets into this tile, it's going to be checking this tile. And if there's no ground detection right here, then it's going to make a jump. So then it's going to just jump, but we also continue it moving towards its base direction. Then once it comes into contact with the tile wall again, it's going to go back to move. All right. So, and then it's going to just keep moving again. So now let's see what a try to jump is doing. Or actually, let's do the turn first. So this is what the turn is doing. It is checking if the contact tile wall is on either the left or the right side. And this is so that when you're moving, it can just touch a tile wall and then turn around. And I'm also providing an after certain amount of time of, of 0 0.01 seconds. And the reason for this is so that when the when it does initially turn around, in order to turn around again, it's got to touch the next wall. If you don't have that weight, it might get stuck, depending on how your FPS is doing, it might get stuck. So this is allowing one frame of movement before it actually starts to check for the next turn, which is just the safer way to do this. But simply all you gotta do is you just change the display direction minus equal 180, and what that does is it flips it. So if you're looking right, you're gonna be looking left. If you're looking left, you're gonna be looking right. It's a nice little trick. All right, so now let's go to this try to jump. Now this one is gonna be a little different and you'll just have to set it up however you, however you need it in your project. But basically what this is doing is it's doing the same thing where it's looking for a left or right touching tile wall, but we're also looking if the area detection is equal to one. And so what I did there is basically in the tiles here, or actually let's go to the scene first. So you can see that, and this is kind of confusing because I actually have these set up as well. Let me change this real quick. These ones are actually just these normal ones. So what I did was I took these corners right here, and these corners are going to be whether you can whether it's a wall that you want to jump or not. So basically, the reason so if we watch this, you'll notice that the object jumps when he touches this wall, but doesn't jump when he touches this wall. He just flips. So we'll just watch this again. So he'll jump, but then he'll just flip. And then he'll jump when he comes off of this because there's no tile wall here. And then again, he'll jump off this one because there's no tile wall, so he'll make a jump. But he doesn't try to jump from here. And the reason why is because we have them separated. This one, if it touches the area, or if, if it touches the wall and the area detection is one, then it's gonna try to jump. 
So that's how you would make ledges that you know he can jump from be able to be detected that he can jump. Go to the tile here, and on these corner ones, and this was just to differentiate, they could be the same tile, but you would probably need to duplicate them. Um, that's the problem with PGM, is there's so many ways to set up something that I can't just blanket everything. So this is just the way I did it. You would find your own way. But the key is, is to make it to where when you're touching this one, it's making the enemy group area detection one. And so we're not using the overlap one, which is what I normally use. We're just using the if it's touching the tile wall, which is really handy in this situation. All right. So then with that setup right there, you can see how why it jumps right here. It's because it's moving on to no, it basically a falling point. And then you can see why it jumps right here because it's touching an area detection one tile. Then when it hits the wall right here, it turns around and then it tries to jump again because again, no tile, but it doesn't make it. Then it jumps again. Then it jumps again, turns around. Then it jumps again and then it jumps again onto here and then it jumps off and kind of goes over. So that's the general logic. So, but this one doesn't provide any chasing. So now let's go to the chase one right here. So we're just going to go click on this, going to click on the object. And what this one is doing, if you haven't seen it already, oh, whoops, got a on starting scene here. All right. So this one's chasing the player. It's jumping at the same time. And it's chasing the player. So now I'm going to jump over it. Oh, this, it turns red when it gets close. So that way, that's just whatever you would do when it gets close. But you can see that it's chasing the player and it's jumping over and stuff like this. So yeah, let's look at this object. I'm gonna click it, click edit base object. And you can see that it still has the move, it has the jump from ledge, the turn, the try to jump, it has all that stuff. Now, but the only thing different is, is that I'm using a move template setting and I'm moving it towards the player. That's really the only difference that I'm doing. Um, on the jump, I'm still only moving it towards display direction. The turn, I'm flipping it. The jump up, I'm moving it towards display direction, etc. cetera. But um, the move, I'm just moving it towards the player. And in order to accomplish this, your movement speed vertical has to be zero. Otherwise, it's gonna be obviously trying to move up and it's gonna be shaky. So if you have the movement, the vertical movement speed at zero, then it's going to chase it left and right pretty accurately. And so then the only thing that I added for convenience was I added a distance check, and then that's when the object turns red. And, and basically this would be your attack or whatever it would be. And then when it's not in the distance, it goes back to the moving. So that's just simple, you know, what that chase event was like. So now let's go back to the basic crawler bugs. Again, this is just where it's going over a area of it's just going around a simple square or rectangle basically. And so if you check one of these, you can see that it just has simply a start left one and a start right one. And then it's just going left when it comes in contact or sorry, when it's not in contact with the tile wall of going down, then it's gonna go down. Then, and you can see I'm just moving it towards display direction. You can see that I'm using a different animation. So in the animations here, under the enemy crawling left, you can see that I have all these different animations. I've set the direction accordingly, and that way I can use move uh, towards display direction. You can also specify the direction stuff, but again, this is just one way to set it up. But the important thing about these is that we need to, let's see here, I want that one, but I wanna hide these ones. We need to keep the wall detection exactly in one spot no matter what direction. So that's what I had to do. So if I hide these again, this might take a second here. Hide these again. You can see that that wall detection is spot on. Let me select it. It does not move at all. And that, that is the key, is that it does not move at all. That way you can have this system be very um, uh, safe. And so the I separated these like this, uh, mostly for convenience, like the start left, the start right. So all you gotta do in your scene is you just select one and then you just select which one it is. Is it a start left or a start right? So that one's a start right, then this one's a start left. And then it's pretty simple to imagine what they do. They just go around crawling. I'll just show it off real quick. Oops, got to... Uh... 
do the start scene thing. So yeah, just simple crawling back and forth, right? All right, so now let's go to the more advanced one, which this one's going up, down, left, right. It's, it's way more adaptive. So let's click into this one and we're just gonna see it. And it, it's not a lot going on. Oh, also, by the way, one thing I forgot to mention is that I've turned the uh, gravity off on this object. And I like doing that when I know that an object doesn't need gravity. That way I don't have to click this every time or, an, or I forget about it later on and I don't click it, it messes up the play test. I just found if I know that something's not gonna have gravity, just set it to zero and it's just so much easier. But yeah, so now going back to this, you basically have your starting points. So you have left, is it going up left on a wall? Is it going down left on a wall? Is it going right side or right, but upside down, left upside down? So you have all these different positions. So let's say I wanted to add a new one. All I would do is I would just select what position it's in when it's starting. And also I would have to make sure that it is touching the wall. So I would just grab one of these crawlers advance. I would say upside down facing right. And I would just make sure that it is touching the wall here. And when we play test here, it will just start reacting according to what it needs. All right. And so what it's basically doing is, let's just say that this first one here, I'll delete this one. This first one here is heading right. So we'll start with right. And it's basically determining what two options are there. Basically, if the enemy walks off the edge, it can only go down right. Or if it hits a wall, it can go up. And so those are really the only options that it can have. So basically that's what I do. I check if the bottom floor is not touching. If so, it's gonna go down left wall. And then if it is, if it touches a right wall and it's also touching down, then it's going to go to an upright wall. Now you would think that you'd be able, be able to combine these into one check, just have these both. But for some reason it doesn't work. It, the, the logic will not work. They have to be separated. Yeah and keep that in mind. And then we just, again, I'm using move towards display direction in all of these, just so it's clear. And then again, just for the left side down. So now we're heading down the left wall like this. And the only options we can have is we can either walk off a wall and then we need to head this way, or we hit a wall and then we need to head right. And so that's basically the common practice that I did was I just went to this scene and I was like, okay, if I'm headed down, what are my only options? And then I copy pasted these tile walls uh, conditions, made them change them accordingly. So to in order to start moving right, I need to hit the bottom wall, and then I need to still be on that left wall. And so that's basically what I did. And then you basically mirror it to the other side, and then boom, you have your advanced, your more advanced crawl that will go over all these different kinds of scenes. So hopefully this video was helpful. As I get more requests for side view enemies, I'll add them to this pack. And so that way it can be a useful, quick sample of how an enemy logic could look in your games. Any questions, comments below, Steam Forms, Discord, we'll get you figured out. That said, I'll see you at the next video.